What's up, guys? Welcome back to another Her Lounge podcast. What a week, y'all. That's an understatement. Man, I just don't know how much longer I can take of this mess, but it's getting better. Um, I've been doing a lot of, I was so excited about our, sorry guys, let's just go into let's our, let's get right into let's it. Let's get right into it, right? But let's go to our quote of the day just so that no one's like, hey, um, you can rise up from anything. You can completely recreate yourself. Nothing is permanent. You're not stuck. You have choices. You can think new thoughts. You can learn something new. You can create new habits. All that matters is that you decide today and never look back, which is perfect. This is why I chose it. So I've been doing a lot of like um, watching videos about productivity because we were, you know, going to do our mixer, but everybody has life, which I completely understand because I was running from one thing to make it to Mm -hmm. the mixer that night. Um, And so for those of you guys that have no idea what I'm talking about, so when you're part of the uh, Patreon and you're part of her world, we have virtual mixers uh, once a month. And so this was our, it was supposed to be our goal planning uh, virtual mixer. So we didn't have it just because life, right? And um, so I've been doing a lot of watching videos about, you know, productivity and Okay, so I want to ask you a question about this, Rob. Okay, hit okay, it. Okay, I want to put this thing on silent because it annoys me, and I don't know how to do it. So I'm just going to put do not disturb on this for one hour. Bye. Nice. I don't know how to stop it. Um, okay, so when you make, do you think a to-do list is useless or it's useful? Credibly useful. Okay. This is why the, this is why, you know, you can read, you can watch videos, you can listen to, it, it, I'm, I'm a tie in politics here, right? Because it, when you listen to one channel, you get one thing. When you get to another channel, you use another thing. Well, this is kind of the same thing. So I literally watched a lady who said, to-do lists are useless. They have no point mm-hmm. because it takes you longer to actually look at them, look at your list, decide what you're going to attack for let's just say the first half of your morning or the second half of your morning, whatever it is that takes longer than you just saying, I'm doing these three things tomorrow and that's it. Like you're not going to concentrate on looking at it, analyzing it. Like you're just doing it. That's it. And I was like, no, that's, that's not how my brain works. Mm -hmm. Like I have a master to do list for the week. And then I break that master to-do list into five days. How about you? Uh, I do it the day before. I mean, yeah, I have like a general, I have literally a miscellaneous section. Yes. And then I start to compartmentalize the week, I guess. Okay. So I do Sunday nights. I mean, you know that because that's Mm kind of how I I send you the schedule for the week or whatever. So I do Sunday nights and everything that's already permanent is permanent. And what I mean by that is we all know Penny goes to school Tuesdays and Thursdays, what activities she has, what activities Sunny has. So those are permanent state on the schedule. They're, those don't change, mm-hmm. you know? It's everything else that may change. Well, one thing that I want to start to do is, which I don't do, is um, if I need, if I'm doing something, you should, which is something that they talked about. So, uh, just allowing two hours to attack something. So if that's what you need, let's just say, no, well, I have so much shit to do today. So I'm only going to allow one hour to organize in my closet. I'm just using that for example, or I'm only going to dedicate one hour to laundry. So depending on how that works, it may just be two loads, but you got two loads done. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Versus like you don't spend three hours on and now the rest of your to-do list got pushed back because you know, some things are just don't always go as planned. So I, I was telling my Chingo, I was like, I was saying, I was like, one thing I want to do is like, that's it. I, I said, I'm only going like today. Let's just use today, for example. Let's do today. I literally have it on my calendar that I was only supposed to be there where I was today from 10 to 12 at this meeting. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it was like, Hey, so I got to go. Hey, so I got, what do you think about this? Yeah. I mean, it looks great, but I got to go now. I have a podcast. So now I'm starting my podcast at one 
and it was supposed to start 1230. Does that make sense? Yeah. Do you see how that just didn't work with everything else? And so now everything else that's on my to-do list that had its allotted time has been pushed back. So something just didn't work. Does that make sense? So my point to why if you watch this channel, that channel and all these things, it's everybody had a different thing. Some people don't like to do to do lists. Some people think they're supposed they're great. Some people think you should not do this time to this time to this time. It's like crazy how many yeah. like videos there are out there. So what I did to kind of like, which I think everybody does this, right? It's the same thing with budgeting, right? For some people, the envelopes work. For some people don't. Envelopes don't always work for self-employed people. It's mm-hmm. really hard, yeah. especially if you work commission, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Or you work, you only get paid once a month or whatever it is, you know? That doesn't work for everybody, yeah. you know? And so... But it's fun you, seeing other people's systems because you might totally. pick and choose. Like, oh, that's that actually, what I was just going to say. Uh, okay. Yes. So I feel like I've, from budgeting, I pick and choose. Like I said, at the very beginning when we were trying to pay pay off debt, we did do the envelope system. And I only did it, though, for like gas, the student debt, and then groceries were like... Oh, and family activities like so entertainment, this was entertainment stuff, yeah. yeah, so this was the envelope that's all the money we had and any way you cut it, it's useful like how you so yes. what degree is it useful? It really depends on what part of life you're in, honestly, right A young person's probably gonna find a lot of use out of it. an older person maybe less, but it's still gonna because it's a muscle too to like how much am I gonna allocate to entertainment? you know how am I gonna allocate to just fun spending or whatever? If you've got that envelope system and you're used to using it, it's easier to stay on track and it's crazy because if you go out to eat, let's just say usually the only day that we go out to eat is Sundays after church mm-hmm. right We don't really do Saturdays because we're home. And if we're not home, we're somewhere near home to when it's time to eat. We just go home to eat. Does that make sense? So it's like at the park. Okay, well, let's go. Everybody's hungry. Let's go home and eat now, Mm -hmm. you know? So I can't say that we really eat out a lot unless we need meal prep. I might pick up something like on the way home or whatever it is, but Sundays. Yeah. But if you look at how much going out to eat cost, just think about it. So for a family of, I'm I'm saying when we have Mickey also, okay? So when it's Mickey, myself, Pete, Penny, there's four of us. And Sunny shares whatever Penny doesn't eat because mm-hmm. Penny doesn't eat all her food. So they share a plate, yeah. okay? And it still is like $80. That seems low. And it's, yeah, I'm not including drinks. I'm talking yeah. about the food. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like when you get the bill and it's like 110, you're like, well, what the hell did we eat? You know, it's like, yeah, I mean, I didn't get anything. A lot of the times though, too, it's like for some people, because you do know somebody that loves, I mean, they're eating out all the time, mm-hmm. right? And for them, and I try to understand people's justification for spending that amount of money, it's, it's convenience. And it's true. People will do anything for convenience. And if you've got it, or even if you don't have it and you're trying to work it to where you can make it happen that way, because you don't want to cook, you don't mm-hmm. have the time, blah, blah, mm-hmm. whatever the excuse is, I understand paying for yeah. convenience. Yeah, 100%. Like we talk about cleaning and doing the laundry and all that, all that shit. If you could pay for the convenience of not doing that. Oh my that. God. I, the other day was really, my sister's like, why don't you um, go drop off laundry at a laundromat so they can wash and fold it for you? And I was like, damn, that sounds great. But the th- one, the thought of it is like, so someone else is going to wash my clothes. It's kind of weird. Like... Ooh, in a dirty like I don't know like I don't know so you're washing everybody's clothes in the mm-hmm. and I shouldn't say that because I take oh by the way I know that you guys already ruined your comforter that day <laughs> that one comforter don't remind me <laughs> but if you go to the laundry mat which is hot, kind of where I've done to uh-huh. save money because it's so expensive now at the cleaners oh, by yeah. the way to take a, a dent and I take two I take mine and Mickey's because yeah. they're both that same brand and so I don't want to mess them up but um, I was watching videos on how to like wash those in your tub. Well, it did say the tub, but it also said in the machine, if you go to like a laundry mat mm. and then don't dry it, just bring it home after it's done the spinning or whatever. Mm. I'm like, so where am I going to put it though? Over the seats? Mm. Or do I let it air dry there? 
We got to go back old school like our moms and have the, the clothesline outside. Well, I'm going to try it. I'm going to, I really am praying I don't mess it up because it's about 200 and some dollars every time I take mine and Mickey's oh, yeah. comforter. Oh, yeah. So just on the comforters, we're not talking about like his sh- Pete's shirts for church or for work, like for performing or whatever. So it's like, um, we are not going to the cleaners anymore. And by the way, the guy at the cleaners, he's such a good guy. He was telling us how hard they're having it right now. Yeah. And with with as listen to this, with just being able to get hangers. I've heard that. I've heard that hangers are a hot commodity. And he said he's having to buy them local from like a place off of Harwin and it's costing him so much money for those hangers. I bet. And he's got to put the cost on who? On the customer. He's not going to eat it. So now those heavy duty, because uh, the comforters are put on like super duper heavy duty uh, mm-hmm. hangers. And so it's like, okay, so the reason my bill has been a lot more is I'm also paying for all your these hangers that you're paying just because they're local. Yeah. We well, got to think all the other supplies too. Like everything else he uses to wash the clothes has gone up as well. It's insane. I, I was like, I was just like thinking about like everything, even like groceries and... Um, <laughs> Y'all, this is really mean. I don't know what I'm about to say, but so there are certain things that um, my sitter likes to have to cook, right? Which is fine, you know? Um, so those things are often found at Joe V's. And while it's cheaper there because you're bagging your own stuff, there aren't, I'll just be honest with you, you're not going to find your healthy items there. Probably none, to be honest with you. Like, Maybe frozen broccoli and frozen cauliflower because that's the only thing I'm able to buy there. That's my And so it was funny because, so Penny said, Mom, so we came here just to buy junk food? <laughs> and she's um, the lady that, she's the one that's ringing me up, the cashier, she goes, junk food? This is not junk food. And I was like, oh my God, it totally is junk food. Because what was I taking? I was taking... Um, uh, what are those called? The pizzas in the box. Oh, yeah. Right? Well, Which she loves. Pizza bites. Um, no, she doesn't like the pizza bites. They're actually little uh, mini pizzas mm-hmm. and they're stuffed crust pizza. Ooh. They're actually damn good. I'm, I hate I'm to sure say they, they are. are. Of course they but are. But they are. And it's the junk that she likes. So I always, every time I, she, when she asks for pizza, mom was like, okay, well, let me go make you some junk, you yeah, know? Yeah. Because she knows I don't really like for her to eat that stuff. So. She was like, girl, this is good food. And I was just like, ma'am, it is not. Like, I didn't know what to say, you know, because I'm taking that. I'm taking Danables, you know, because they're way cheaper there. I don't know why than at H-E-B. Huh. Well, I mean, the clientele, like they got to cater to them. And they have no limit, guys. Just FYI on how many packs of water you buy. Mm. H-E-B does give you a limit. I think you can only do two. They're yeah, lying. Two cases. Two cases. Here I can go, but I can literally say, "Oh, my whole cart is full of water. Can you just charge me for it?" They don't say anything. They've got pallets and pallets and pallets of water. Well, that's why HEB you go in on one end, you buy two, and then you take it to your car and you go in the other end and do yeah. the self checkout, and then you buy another two. So I like to have at least ten packs of water. How about you? Uh, four. Four. Ten's. Cr- I mean, all right. That's, I do. 10. I like the extra yeah. preparedness. Yeah. So I do ten. And then during that little scare that we had where it was like the water, something was wrong with our water. Well, I went through cases like no one's business. And thank God I had all that water because people were going water crazy at the store trying to buy it. But then my stash went down to two cases and I literally panicked. You're like, bro, I was like, no, bro. I was like, you got to go back and get more. Like, you better get in line and we got to get got to go back up to 10. Like we can't let it. So every time I go to the grocery store, if there's not 10, let's just say there's eight. Okay. Then I'm ordering two grocery store or there's nine. We just get one case. Does that make sense? But there's always got to be 10. I want to go back to what you're talking about. The, the schedules and, or yeah, Yeah. routine schedules. And what, what, what what we got you to watch that? Like, are we trying to refine your own system or? Well, because we were going to be talking about goals. So you've heard of this, the whole smart system, right? Hmm. The Maybe? S-M-A-R-T. The acronym sounds familiar, but I don't, yeah. I don't know. So let me just kind of tell you ab- about it. It's Because I'm it's, sure a lot of people listening are like, yeah, they're still in their New Year's, not New Year's, but in their New Year kind of mode where we're trying to get stuff figured out. We're trying to get on a path of like success here. Okay. So I'm going to tell you two of the things, and my patrons are probably going to get really pissed at me for sharing things that we were going to talk about already. But 
just so you guys kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about, what the smart um, system is, right? And if you're not a patron, this is a perfect time to go to patreon.com forward slash her lounge podcast to become a patron. So basically what it is, is specific. Okay. These are how you set your goals. Specific. What do I want to accomplish? So what specific thing do you want to accomplish? Then there's measurable, right? How will I know when it is accomplished? That's how you measure it, right? Achievable. That's the A in the smart system. How can the goal be accomplished, right? Mm -hmm. Relevant. Does this seem worthwhile? Which is the R. And then T, time bound. When can I accomplish this goal? Mm. And so this is um, called the smart structure. And I heard it a long time ago. And a lot of people kind of go by it. But I like it. I don't use it like I write the goal. Then, you know, when do I plan to uh, accomplish it? But I don't like to put a deadline unless it needs to have a hard deadline. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Um the achievable part, I think, is important because is that goal really achievable for you when you're setting it? And, and I'm just going to use weight loss because I think that's the most easily relatable, easy relatable to people that they can actually kind of picture it. A lot of people love to make these unattainable goals when it comes to losing weight. But let's just say, for example, if you know that you have a wedding in July, we are now in January, calculate more or less like how many pounds you'd like to lose by the time July comes, divide that by the amount of months, right? From here to July, and then figure out how you can realistically attain that goal. Like, ma'am, you're not going to lose 10 pounds in a week. And if you do, you're probably going to gain it all back. Like you're the next throwing, month. You're probably yeah, purging something's going yourself. On. You're, you're, Eating shitting pills or shitting teas or you're doing Which, something. Hey, guilty of doing all those things. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I've never taken the... I've only done one time the ballerina tea thing. The worst feeling ever. It's like this Asian ballerina tea that you take and it makes you go to the restroom. And it, everybody was talking about it, right? And I'm always the one that's like, yeah, I don't, I don't do what everybody else does, right? And there I go, really? What? It makes you feel that good? Okay, well, let me try it stomach ache it gives you when it hits i feel you uh, we have a tea called like we call it poo tea i don't really think it's called poo tea it's got a name and it sounds like it's a good name bro <laughs> the same thing that the amount of cramps that's what i feel like these trans dudes say that like when they're menstruating it feels like oh that's another wait a second we're going there <laughs> okay but oh, hold on. we're going we're there. not there yet we're not there yet and, and so here's the thing when, you, when you're talking about that i saw a couple of videos over the weekend too i mean my my algorithm on youtube is all over the place like mm -hmm. i actually enjoy it more despite the censorship on our political side of what we do here but uh it's good about like giving me the like productivity and like this and like that unlike like instagram and facebook if you're still on there if you get on one thing that is the one thing it's going to feed you youtube pretty good about being a little more broad about at least three different things so anyway i was watching this thing on um time is time not the most valuable fucking thing that we have? I wonder if it's the same video I watched. Go ahead, tell me. So when we look at what we're doing, you know, if I, if I sat and thought to myself, what's Mark Cuban doing right now? I don't know, but he's got the same 24 hours in the fucking day that I do, okay? So it, the, it, they kind of went into detail about how just leveraging what you do with that time is what the return is going to be. So stop me if it's kind of similar to what you were listening to. But, and it's true, and we've heard it a thousand times coming from different directions, but I can't seem to, or at least I'm trying to now because I haven't been able to just figure out what it is that I can do, like how I can substitute me in the, in the place of this action in order to leverage more more uh, just success from that activity. If that means delegating to a virtual assistant or if it means uh, delegating to somebody around me even, I have to figure out how that can be delegated, period. I think we mm -hmm. all do. Because if you're, for instance, if you're at work as it is eight hours, okay, well, that eight hours is done. You sleep for eight hours if you're lucky. It's 16 hours. And the rest mm -hmm. of it is stuck with your wife, your kids, and the activities you have to do as an adult. You got to find some way to leverage the time and activities some way or another. Otherwise, those 24 hours are just aren't spent the same as people who you're looking to emulate. Like you look up at, you know, your Warren Buffett's. I'm just giving examples of people that make a lot of money. Uh, I said Mark Cuban or whoever. Yeah. It's like, he's never got 24 hours. What they, For starters, they're probably getting up earlier. They're, they're definitely delegating a lot more. And they're just able to compartmentalize shit that, that gives them more of a return than them actually doing it. I want to wake up early so bad and I just can't. 
Um, I just, I think I go to bed too late. And I know, I don't think I know. Mm -hmm. I'm ending my night at midnight. Impossible. And trying to set an alarm for six. I managed to do it two times out of the week last week and it felt great. But bro, by 5 p.m., (laughs) <laughs> and that's all right actually if you need to get like a half hour nap though if you can make it happen like that's again you got to work that in there like can you really do yeah, that i don't know i'd have to come here to take a nap <laughs> i don't think i do but going back to this whole thing there's also a thing called life goals and it's also a chart so all my patreon ladies got this so my patronas who were going to be part of this virtual mixer they got this um graphic that i made um and so basically it's different categories um it goes by family friends not the same category. So mm-hmm. it's family, friends, work, and school, depending on where, mm-hmm. who, what, what's your situation, body, mental health, and spirituality. And basically, the cat; those are the categories. And then it's what am I? What I'm doing well. So what are you doing well with your family? And then where do I need improvement with my family? And what's my goal for my family? So that you have those three categories. F- those three, I guess, um, subjects for family, friends, work and school, body, mental, mental health, spirituality. And if you've never really done, sat down and done that, like you should, cause you'd be amazed at like how you can find more than one thing wrong with what you're doing. At least I can, I'll be guilt. I'm totally guilty of telling you what, what that is. Like for me, I am the worst person with friends the worst person with friends. I am. I am. Because it's like my it's it's very true when someone says, I'm just so busy, I don't have time to like call or text or do anything. So my girlfriend, Rania and I we use this app called Marco Polo. Um, So if you use it, then you're familiar. But basically, it's like leaving a video message. Mm -hmm. And why that works so well for she and I is because for one, she lives in California. Right. So we're two hours. She's two hours behind. I'm two hours ahead. And our schedules are totally different. You know, she's a stay at home mom. So she's super busy with kids. Her husband um, is out of town a lot for work. So she's solo. So having she'll usually her videos are she prompts her phone there and she's driving the whole time having a conversation with I don't ever see her face. It's funny because it's always like she's driving and I mean, she's got to look at the road. So it's basically her talking just in the car. So she's always like, I wonder what people are thinking when they're seeing me talk and I'm not holding a phone. I'm not doing anything. I was like, I think it's normal now for people to use their car thing. Totally. But, um, so that's how, that her messages are sent to me like that. My messages are usually sent like, hey, um, I'm at Penny's Jiu Jitsu class right now. I just kind of wanted to come back and respond to your last message. And it's kind of that's what we do. Right. Mm-hmm. My girlfriend, Amy, who moved here from Spain, she's probably been here a couple of months, maybe like. She might have gotten here around September. I've yet to see her since she's moved back. I think I saw her more when she lived out of the country Damn. than when she was here. And what I mean by that is like a plan, a trip was planned so that I could go visit her. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, I've texted her the entire time she's been here. We've texted and she texted me back. She's She took a couple of days to respond to my text. And now I've taken a, and not on purpose. I'm not doing it on purpose. I just know like subconsciously, I know that I need to reply to her. I do that to Dawn sometimes. <laughs> And this is the person who helps me with my freaking podcast and newsletter. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like it has to stop. It's on, it's on my, my goal thing to do. And, and when we were going to do the virtual mixer, I was, I wanted to show everybody like, so there's a lot of bad things that I do, you know, and it's in, and something, I, I just kind of feel like they always say like, well, some things are going to suffer so that other things can can be successful. But I just don't feel like that's true. I feel like there's got to be a balance. And I don't know when I'll figure out that balance because I've yet to figure it out. I don't know if you have, but I have not. But there's got to be a balance because like you said, the Mark Cubans, the, all those people, they have figured it the F out. But I also, I'm not a fan of the word balance because if you think about balance, so... Balance is a state of complete stillness. 
Mm-hmm. W- those people were, are never, ever, if they are now, it's because obviously they're billionaires and they figured out a way to delegate everything to where mm-hmm. they can have the balance that they want. Mm-hmm. But us, most entrepreneurs, most people listening right now, have to, you have to overcorrect one way or another. Otherwise, you are out of balance. You're still, and yeah. you're basically in a rut. So it, it is going to be a little bit of a give and a take, in my opinion. And I don't like, as entrepreneurs, work life balance is never a thing. The best, the most lucky you can get is having a partner that understands that and is like along for the roller coaster with you. Oh my God. Thank God I do. Cause I really don't know how that would work. <laughs> no, you can't have like a regular partner. No, you could not have a regular partner. It's like y'all totally either A, have to be both like type A personalities where y'all both like the nine to five, you know, you both like, uh, you know, structure and I love structure. Don't get me wrong. Like, and my husband can tell you if I call him in here right now, I would, if I asked him, what is my biggest pet peeve? He's going to say mess. I don't, I cannot function because as it is, my life and world is so chaotic and I don't want to say messy because I don't want to messy can messy means a lot of things, but messy in the sense of I have so much going on in my brain. Everything's like this, right? Like everything's messy and it needs to be organized. I don't want to come home to an unorganized house either. Does that make sense? It does make sense, but that's putting too much pressure on yourself. If you're the one that's going to have to clean it. Exactly. Like Saturday I came home and I had to apologize to him because I came home and I just saw like mess in the entryway. We have a a coat hanger, right? But everything is hung up on a coat hanger. It's not a coat hanger. There's Penny's sleeping bag from school on there. There's hats, there's jackets, there's hoodies. I mean, you pretty much can't see the pole because there's so much stuff hung on there. It's supposed to hold stuff I know, but it's like, it's got four, and it's an old school one. So it's like iron, steel iron. Like it's super heavy, (laughs) right? I found it at a thrift shop, right? And it's like one of, it's my favorite thing that I've purchased. I don't know why. And it's not, I've kept it with me the entire time. Like out of all the things that Chingo thought I needed to get rid of that was antique, I said, I cannot get rid of my steel. They don't make them like this I feel like those were inside the old school phone booths. Like if it was yes, raining, you would because, hang it inside. Because it was so, it's so heavy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it literally, like you have the both. Like if you could get help with it, it'd be better yeah. than to you put it. That's how heavy it is. I'm not even exaggerating. But anyway, so I just came home and then his, his boxing gloves were on the floor. And I was just like, oh my God, it is 1130 at night. I'm coming home from a party because guess who was having a party? Your babysitter? You know. <laughs> I thought they were done. No, they're like, starting. That was 2022. The exactly. 2023 season it's just started. Got... We just got started. Fuck you. No way. I'm serious. Ain't this no is time. February. Now, I'm sorry. This is January. February is the baby shower for one of her daughters. And late February, I forgot which kid has another one. Then there's March and there's April. There's no way. Somebody's May. There's no June. Then my kid is July. And then one of her kid, one of her grandkids is right after July. And it's like, I have to go to them because they love my kids so much. They see them as like, Part oh, those family. are like my cousins, yeah. you know, and I can't, I can't not go. Does hmm. that make sense? No, like, it does not for me because I would not go. Listen, <laughs> trust me. Saturday was my cousin, and this is all guys. If you if this you're like, what does this have to do with what we were just it's talking? It's coming back around. It does. We're it does. Here. Listen, it's coming around. It makes a lot of sense because I always like to use my ex's mom as an example because I didn't have kids, so my my only thing to do was go to work, come home. It was about me. Mm-hmm. It's all I, that mattered. It was me and my dogs. That's it. So when people would invite her to activities, I don't know if I've said this already before, whether it be to a birthday party, a quinceañera, a wedding, whatever it was, she never went. You're talking about your mom? No, my ex's mom. Oh, sorry. I was was like, wait, who did you say? Your ex's mom. She never went. Rarely did you ever go. But she would make sure to send you a gift. Mm -hmm. That was like going to have mandatory for her. It's fair. And one of the things that she said was to me, she goes, Why am I going to give up the only two days that I have to do to spend time with my husband? Like legit time with my husband, right? Yeah. yeah. And my kids, 
or work on my house or whatever I feel like doing mm-hmm. for somebody else. I went on Monday through Friday. It's like, I got to get up. I got to go to work. I got to make dinner. I got to cook. I got to clean. You know what I'm saying? And so now I'm going to go spend my only free days at someone else's party. And I used to think like, oh my God, like it's not going to hurt you to go. But I feel her more than ever at 41 years old. (laughs) More than ever. Like I've been meaning to text her and tell her like, my God, like when you used to tell me that I used to remember thinking like, man, that's so weird. Like, how can you be like that? But it makes sense to me because the only two days that I technically have with no babysitter, like I try not to work. I try not to text you. I try not to text Don. Like I try not to like, which is never a problem, but go on. Yes, I know. But you know what I mean? It's Mm -hmm. like, it's the weekend and it's like, the only time, but for some reason, because I'm not doing anything else, mm-hmm. those when, that's when ideas start to come because you're not thinking about anything else, you know? Um, so I try my best to like jot them down or like write them on my phone or text them. And I'll, or I'll say like, please don't expect, like I was, uh, that's this is always how I, t- I start my text. I know it's the weekend. You don't have to reply, but I wanted to send you this just so that we can discuss it. You know what I'm saying? That's always like how I send them because it's the weekend. Who the F wants to also fuck with me on the weekend, you know? So I've started to think that way. Well, Saturday was my cousin's daughter's quinceanera. It was gloomy. It was cold and it was rainy. I had this much motivation to go. And then my aunt texts me too. She goes, oh my God, I just wanted to lay here and watch movies in my bed. I was like, well, I can't lay here and just watch movies, but I do just want to be in my PJs and not do anything. Well, obviously I still went because it's my cousin's daughter's can sing it out. But I was happy once I was there. Does that make sense? Because I got to see my some of my cousins who I haven't, unless it's a party like that, like mm-hmm. we just haven't seen each other. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we see each other via Instagram, but you know, it's not like before. Before it was like, you didn't have a choice. You had to go with your parents. Yeah. So you saw everybody. Now everybody has their own life, their own kids, their own activities. So it's harder to see each other. So it was still really nice to see everybody. You know what I'm saying? So I was happy once I went, but literally I was like, oh my God, it's 9.30. So... Penny is, this is her free day. So I'm not worried about her, but I'm worried about Sunny because now when she gets home, it's going to be a bitch winding her down. Because if she falls asleep on the way home and then she wakes up when we get home, I'm in trouble. She's up. That's it. I'm not going to bed early. I'm going to bed when this little girl decides she's ready to go to bed because she done took a nap. You know, I was so happy. I let her sleep. She went to sleep in her dress and her pantyhose. Nice. I said, I'm not, she went to sleep. I'm not dealing with her. So I just laid her in her crib and I said, oh my God, this is so crazy. Penny got in PJs. We were, I couldn't believe that we were home at a decent time. Like I was actually in my bed and I was actually watching TV. And I was like, you know what? That's not that bad. What was a decent time? What what time was it? I was, it was 10. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's pretty pretty good. Yeah, Yeah, it's pretty decent. Now if you could just be in bed at 10 every night. Every night. That's, that would be great. Yeah, that's, I mean, if we, if it's, we're probably mm-hmm. at 10, 30 and we're already asleep. Like that's. Man, that's awesome. And two days last week or the week before, I don't remember what it was. We had a lot of things going on. And two days out of the week, we fell asleep at 8.30. 8.30 p.m. It was the fucking greatest. Well, I fell asleep one day at 9.30 because the girls went knocked out. And Pete knocked out putting Sunny to sleep while I was putting uh, Penny to sleep. But I've really been working with Penny on her sight words. Listen, it's not her goal. It's my goal, y'all. I'm really trying to have her read by five. So it's my goal that in seven months, I've got to have her reading at least level one books, you know? Yeah. So every night we've been working on this, working on this, working on this. And um, so as soon as we're done reading, it's time for her to go to bed. So we've started this new thing with her, which is working out great, by the way. Um, We haven't had none of these... I didn't get to watch no TV. So I tell her, okay, it's time for bath. You have two options. Do you want to watch TV first before we do reading? Or do you want to read first and watch TV before you go to bed? And so she'll decide which I give her the option. So she feels like, okay, I'm getting the best of two worlds. It has worked out. She's in bed by nine and we're done. 
it didn't work like that before. It was a struggle before. But anyway, my point to all that was, is that night I went to bed at 930 and that's the one night I, one day, the next got day up I got up. Early. So uh, it felt so good. I was like, damn, why am I ready to get up? Well, no, bro. It was 530. I was like, hell no. I was like, I could not be up this early. This is the first time that like no one is bugging me. Like there's no kid crying. Like I have to at least get up at 630. I got up at six. I left Pete asleep. Usually he likes for me to like, I'll tell him, if you get up first, wake me up so we can have coffee by ourselves. Even if it's 10 minutes, it's nice. Mm -hmm. Those 10 minutes are nice. I went downstairs, Rob. I made my peanut butter toast. Mm. I made my, co- I have peanut butter toast with my coffee every morning, y'all. And I know that's, everybody's like, you don't have to have it. Yeah, I do. Anyway, um, it's Doesn't not part of my mind. diet, guys. I, it's not, but try it and it's something about it. It's either that or I got to go get pan dulce. And I'm really trying to avoid getting pan dulce. Yeah, so which one? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's skip the you pan know. dulce. At least for now. At least, exactly. at least till July when that imaginary wedding is exactly. here and you're like, I lost 20 pounds. There you go. And so I'm like, okay. And I, was, I sat there and I watched like a prayer at first. And then after that, I caught up on the news about everything that was happening. I was like, oh, that's been happening. Wow, I didn't even know about that. And so then it was like, oh, my God. And then finally I hear, um, I don't know who I heard first, but then Pete comes down. He's like, man, how long have you been awake? I was like, I got up at 630 today. He's like, oh, I was like, actually, it was really nice. Like. There's so many windows in my house. The natural light was coming through. I was I already had my coffee brewed. Like that's actually a little bit of my. Um, I did a reel the other day, guys. If you haven't seen it, go like it, please. Of my um like per, like what my day looks like. And that day, I I was like, you know what? This is so dark in here because I still had all the lights off, and I like videotape me going down making my coffee because i couldn't believe like i had time with no one bothering me to take these little like 10 second videos of the day is that not crazy Yeah, it's fun that's cool um now it's about replicating that though yes it 100 percent is and i just told pete i was like the problem is we have got to get stricter with the girls and again because they work around us. Does that make sense? Versus we working around them. Mm-hmm. So like I said, sometimes it's like Penny, when I get out the shower, then you go to bed, right? And sometimes that ends up being 945, 10 o'clock. You know what I'm saying? So now she's loving it. And then when she be seen me walking, what? You already took a shower? And meanwhile, I done did a mask on my face and took a shower and did everything I needed to do, but she's going to bed past her bedtime. Does that mm-hmm. make sense? Mm-hmm. So my point of that, all of that is guys is like, it is important to have some kind of like beginning, middle and end type of routine and whatever that is for you. If you don't have one, find one that works for you because if you go to YouTube and watch all the videos, right you 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 can just take a little bit from everybody and make it your own and that's kind of what i've been doing here lately it's taking a little bit of everybody i've learned so much from re- about retail through youtube i just want you to know that nice and i've never been on youtube this much if it's not about watching a uh, soft white underbelly uh rogan uh usually the news And lately, it's all been for educational purposes, which I've been very proud of myself. So Hell yeah. I know for years, myself, like, I don't use YouTube for shit. Yeah, I don't really care. I didn't care for it. I mean, I went on there if I wanted to watch, like... Makeup tutorials? Yeah, or not even makeup tutorials. It was more like, you know, oh, what do I want to do today? You know what I'm saying? Type of thing. But um, if you don't, guys, have something like this... You can come over and be a part of her world and you can get this for free. And if you're a patrona, you're actually going to get a free calendar and we're working on it and um, I'm almost done with it. And I know it's like, uh, bitch, it is January 23rd. Who the hell wants a calendar now? But listen, it's one of a kind. Anyway, um, do some try to do monthly goals. If if year if if quarterly goals don't work for you or whatever it is, I try to do monthly goals, which I have felt are really cool. And it's really cool to go back to look at them and write on there like the date that you achieved them. It felt it feels really good to to kind of do that. You know what I'm saying? Um so if you don't do that already, do it. So anyway guys, um those are the little wins that really matter. Yes, I agree. 100 percent for me at least yeah i don't know about oh, for sure what's uh, what's your schedule look like today are you have a, do you have a hard out 
of here so that we keep these tight? Um, I don't because Penny was going to go to jujitsu, but she's got this cough mm. and I don't want to be an irresponsible parent. It's, it's just allergies. It's a runny nose and a cough, but I'm one of those parents that I hate when I see a kid in the class like that. It's like, we're touching the map, bro. You're just like, sweating all you over know, the kids. and then it's all over and then they're on there. And now it's like, I don't know why it's funny. The other day I told the teacher, I said, Pity's not going to school today. I said, cause she woke up again. My kids have bad allergies. She's getting tested when she turns five, finally, mm. because her pediatrician was like, they're not ready for mm. it. Sunny has them too, by the way. So, oh, fuck me, man. That sucks. Yeah. I got so many stories that I don't know though if they'll ever make it to RPT because they're so a little bit more generalized, like you and I talk about. But um, I feel like you would, uh, would appreciate this. I, actually, Chingo would too. I'm not going to say that, but I want to tell you anyway. So I don't like using specifics because, you know, I don't want this to get back to anybody in particular, but a certain friend of a friend was letting us know that their kid who's in sixth grade, uh, is that second grade? Yeah, six or seven, they're in second grade. Their school was having like a Martin Luther King thing, right? They're talking about that with Mm -hmm. the kids, which is, you know, expected and usually pretty general. Like you kind of learn about like, oh, he fought for freedoms. I don't remember what they told you in second grade when you're six or seven. Regardless, I would imagine it's pretty surface level. And then as you get older, you would ascend up the information Mm -hmm. and then you graduate and you start going down the MK Ultra, you know, rabbit holes like we do. Mm -hmm. But um, the the mother, the, the acquaintance of ours, got a letter. There was a substitute this day. The teacher wasn't there. So the substitute uh, was in charge of MLK Day for the kids. And con- she she proceeded to tell the kids how, in long story short, it was white people's fault that MLK was murdered. And that if you're white, you're basically part of the problem of what's going on. This, that, and the other. The mother, when she finds out, is freaking out because her six-year-old now gets home and says, did you know it's white people's fault that MLK died and I'm white and I feel like it's my, legit. Six, bro. Bro, I was so mad. It was 6, 30, 7, 30, 6, 30, 7, 30 in the morning when, when Don filled me in on this and I was like, I said, I looked at her and I said, this is what I did. This is why RPT is so important. I was like, <laughs> I, li- I legit, this is what I did. And I was like, we talk about this and people think we're fucking crazy, but it, until it hits home, it hits your school, it hits your pocket, it hits your house, it hits your whatever, do you start to be like, okay, I should really start paying a little bit more attention. So the mother follows up with the principal at the school. They're, 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 un- they're in disbelief that the substitute took this approach. The teacher who was supposed to, not supposed to have been, but who's that, her class, she calls the mom crying that she can't believe that the substitute presented this to, the six, to her six-year-olds. Long story short, we don't know what kind of... Um, anything disciplinary actions took place to the substitute but now our friends has to deal with this with her six-year-old and in a sense what do you do deconstruct that in a way that's like i don't know i don't even know how to put that in words you know what i mean my um aunt did homeschooling for all her kids because she's the one i told you it was deep in oh that one yeah, mm-hmm. yeah yeah um and one of the things she said for black history month is she never let her daughter do anything about MLK. Mm. She would say, find me. There so, so many African-American people have done amazing things. He's not the only one. Find someone new. And so she would make her explore other black Americans who did amazing things mm-hmm. during Black History Month, you know? That's cool. So that it wasn't always MLK. She feels a certain kind of thing about that story, by the way, also. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot to it also. Yeah. If you go look at so, it. Look exactly. It yeah. So that's why. So I'm not gonna go get into that. Yeah. Right. So um so my aunt feels a certain kind of way about it. So that's the reason why she was like, mm We talked about school and so what she said was, um, kind of with that, she's like, I don't want anybody telling my kid um anything misinformation and, and if it is going to be misinformation i'd rather it come from me the parent mm-hmm. than from some random teacher who went to school to get a certification and she too was told what to teach and has to follow a curriculum yeah she's like so if if i'm gonna do anything i'll follow the curriculum that i want and i'll teach that to my child now granted my aunt it can is a stay-at-home mom, so she's able to do that. That's not an option for every mother out there, right? But as a concerned parent, 
because mm-hmm. it's my biggest concern, right? It's like, I don't want that for Penny. I also, Penny still doesn't know color. I just want you to know that. And I, I really wanted to stay that way until she, re- she knows, okay, her friend Tegan down the street is a, is black. I love that name. I love that Tegan, name too. Yeah. Isn't it so yeah, cool? Yeah, it's a cool name. Um, and her, her brother's name's Miles. I thought they were the cutest little names, Tegan and Miles. Mom, can Tegan and Miles come over? I love it. I just feel like they're rich. I don't know. They sound like rich they're, names they're to the me. French, the French Prince yeah. of Belair kids. Yeah. I always feel like Tegan and Miles are coming over. And Miles is like in, th- in the same school as uh, Sonny. Oh, I mean, cool. as Penny. I'm sorry. He's like in the two-year-old class or something like that. Anyway, so we were talking and then... When we read, right? I don't know what we were reading. And then she said, um, the other day we were, re- uh, Tegan came over and uh, I showed her the words that I can read. Tegan is a little bit older than her. So Penny's four. I think Tegan might be six or seven. So she's a lot older than her, but they play so well together. Um, she's very mature. And she when she sees me, she's like, hi, how's your day today? I'm like, it's great. Thank you. How's your show as well? You know. Like, okay. second, second grade was tough today. Jeez, you're like seven. It's like mm, you know. I'm like, no, I don't know. Tell the me your worries. Was a seven. Today. The slide was full. I couldn't go down. Yeah, there. exactly. <laughs> and I was like, if only I could be seven again. Um, but she said, Luisa can't say. She was kind of making fun of Luisa for not being able to say Tegan. She says Tegan. That's mm. what. So she was mm-hmm. laughing about it. She goes. So she says. Uh, she always tells me, Valentina. Uh, tu amiga la negrita que está. And I'm like, oh my God, if Tegan knew what negrita meant, mm. you know what I'm saying? Like, that'd be so effed up, bro. Like, but she doesn't, obviously, mm-hmm. right? So I said, and what do you say? She goes, well, I always tell her her name is Tegan. I'm like, and that makes me feel so much better because I've never taught her about like mm-hmm. black, white, Hispanic, right? She, I've never taught her about that, but I'm glad that she knows or she's understood at least when I told her we, we we refer to everybody as their name. We don't say black girl, white girl, you know, Mexican girl. <laughs> Although when she gets older, what, it's going to happen. What would be worse if, if Luisa said la negrita or la morenita? I'd rather morenita. Would you? I do. All morenita. Right. I guess that also applies to me. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and so she'll say that too, because Penny has said, she's like, oh, la morenita. But she makes, she goes by, she calls her Tegan. She doesn't say, but... Because she knows Luisa can't say her name when she wants to go play with Tegan. She'll mm. say, can we go play with La Morenita? Me mm. llevas con La Morenita. And she'll say that. And I'm just like, how do I correct that? Just call her by her, say, say her name. She knows her name. Right. How, but can, how Lu- can she say, how can Luisa say Morenita, but she can't say Tegan? She says Tegan. It's less syllables. Yeah, it's easier to say. I don't know. But uh, she says Tegan. And so we were talking about that. My point of that is, it's like, it's certain stuff like that, mm-hmm. that I just don't really, I'm not ready to really like push out there. Also, there's few, there's not very many black kids at her school either. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So there's a few in there. It's mostly, there's more. I would say there's more black teachers than there is black kids there, mm, which yeah. is kind of interesting, right? Yeah. yeah, this school that I was referring to, did, I don't think they had any. I mean, so the story goes. Let me just say allegedly. There weren't any black teachers. Or the story was that this substitute was a black lady and the other teachers were white. <laughs> so it's like, it's not a good, it's not a good, yeah, it's not a good look at all. Come again? Yeah, the substitute was a black lady. Oh, you failed to mention that part, Rob. I know. I just you failed that. to mention that part. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Um, suburb area, a lot of little, little, little older white ladies, and then this younger black substitute comes in. I was like, "Yo, like, what are we doing?" This is why I can't. I can't. I may just have to start my OnlyFans because <laughs> I cannot allow my child to go to public school. I what just do, can't. What are we putting up there? I don't know yet, but I'm going to have to figure out something creative. Because, listen, it, I mean, it, I guess it can happen anywhere, right? Because yeah, yeah, I course. wouldn't be, you know, it, it, literally those things, I know those things can happen anywhere, right? But I guess you kind of feel like, damn, like, 
you know, we don't have to start this young, starting to push this race thing on mm-hmm. children. You know, I just don't like that. I don't know why. I just like no, because it's, it's, it's dumb. It's, it's dumb. useless. It's not. It's not. Yeah, it's not productive. Right. Exactly. It's like we're not getting anywhere. You're teaching, if anything, like separation and like Segregation. hate, yeah. and you know what I'm saying. All the things you're not supposed to teach a child. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, ironically, the civil rights tried to abolish all these things that we're bringing back just so casually. Like the colleges that so are like... So purposely, you mean? Oh, of course. Silly me. So purposely. Mm. Planned as many other things have been. Don't get me started because wait till we talk about this on on the next episode, my G. It's going to go deep. Okay. Before we get to, read to our patrons ready. episode, uh, what else? Uh, so was, I have one other quick little little tidbit. We were at a... At a ga- okay. Do you say gala or gala? Gala. You say gala? I say gala and everyone I've asked says gala except for Dawn says gala and she's got me starting to say gala. Regardless, we were at a gala. Maybe that's a con- uh, country thing. Country thing? Is this gala? Because I also don't say pecan. Well, that, yeah, that's... I say pecan. That's some people. Well, it's also like cement or cement. Uh, Cement. Cement. It's probably cement. You're probably right, but it's cement. My sister in law called me out on all this. She's like, cement. It's like you're saying cement almost. Like it's cement. cement. It is like, cement. Okay. She's right. And then she was like, gala. It's like the Met Gala. You don't say the Met Gala. But it's gala. actually concrete because c- cement is actually what you use to make concrete. Someone corrected me with that. So how about that? I'm going to go even deeper than okay. your sister in law. All right. So when somebody Fair. corrected me that, I was like, Bro, the the damn sidewalk, okay? Shit will walk up. Damn. Yeah, stickler. Like, can I mother- just? Yeah. Can you let me finish my story? We all say that. It's almost Tell like them. saying, like you know, uh, you know, when when I hate when someone like my mom loves to correct me my Spanish whenever I don't use like the proper term or whatever. I hate, I'm like, but did you understand me? Right? A hundred percent. A thousand percent. My mother did the same thing, and also the blings do that to me. So I don't know what the fuck <laughs> they're talking about. Okay. So leave me be. Uh, is, 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 is Spanish really your first language, Rob? <laughs> yeah, motherfucker, this is my first language. I just happen to have assimilated a lot better than Luisa did, or other people, or my mother did, to the United States. But anyway, or me, cement. So, yeah, we were at a at a gala, and maybe I'll talk about the, the act, that whole experience on the Friday's episode. But it was Lunar New Year's. Yeah, mm-hmm. we did, I didn't know. Did you know that? Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that until we ended up at Mize. In Midtown. Oh, yeah. I hadn't been there so long. I love that place. It's so, it's so good. good. But it's actually gotten shitty here lately. Dude, I, I think it got new owners or yeah. something like that. <clears throat> It'd been years, so I still remembered it. Because I, I get the same dish, 97A. The 97A <laughs> That's is... funny. It was Anthony Bourdain's favorite uh, dish. So it's it's like a famous uh, beef, beef, garlic beef, like whatever, whatever. But anyway... So it was uh, myself, my brother, my brother and my sister-in-law, and then another f- couple friends of theirs. She is a teacher from Virginia, mm. just just outside of the D.C. area. That just, They moved to Texas for his work like a year ago. So what we're at the gala, she was sitting next to me on my left side, and Dawn was on my right, and we're just talking about school and stuff. And you know me, I just like subtly, I was like, I just have to pick at you. I have to ask because you're a teacher. And we started talking about education, and she's on the uh, spring Conroe area. Okay. And Jackie had just, from HCX Kids, had just posted what was going on mm. with the libraries and this, that, and the other. So we had this great conversation, and she's like, these kids are three, four years behind. The reading levels in Virginia, the reading levels here in Houston, like, these kids are behind. She said standardized testing, like, these kids can't pass anything. And because she's not fully, uh, she's a teacher, but because of the way, I guess, it works here, she hasn't been able to get a full-time spot somewhere, so she's filling in at different areas. She's like, it's not good. She said, it's not looking good for these kids. I believe it, because let me tell you something. I had a teacher DM me when I would post, like, me practicing with Penny how to cut how to trace letters and she I remember her message was well you're a lot better than other parents and like when I get them because she's pre-k kindergarten Mm -hmm. she says they'll come in and they just expect for you the teacher to already be teaching them a b c one two three which I get it that's what pre-k is for right Mm pre-k you know but I guess teachers feel like damn what you didn't teach them nothing like You could have put them in front of YouTube to what just watch A B C D E F G songs. Plenty of you know educational stuff on there. Yeah, and so she kind of feels like, you know, she's gonna be way ahead. She goes, the fact that she even knows how to hold a pencil. I said, what? She goes, yeah, a lot of kids don't know how to even hold a pencil. I was tripping out because I don't know that that's I I've I we did we did arts and I mean we're doing it now with Sunny. I'll grab the crayon and I grab her little hand and we start. Pre- it's just scribbling, but mm-hmm. I want her to get 
the, the dexterity, yeah, yeah, of grabbing the pencil and you know scribbling. I don't care what it is, but um, she did it to my um, window ledge, though. I guess uh, that went the wrong well, way. That's not good. I was kind of. I'm not. That's in a whole that's other, other a whole other episode. Um, so but, so check it. We're we're talking about that, and then um, we start noticing people like dressed up come in to Mai's, right? And this is this is kind of also the point of the story. Don's sitting with her back against the entrance, which I hate as well. She hates she hates being again like you know not being able to see who's coming mm-hmm. in, which I get. She's like, hey, what's going? On? Is there something going on behind me? All these people that were over here, like most of the restaurant, keep looking over my shoulder. I was like, I couldn't see anything over the wall. I was like, no. And I just went back to talking to this teacher lady, and. Um, all of a sudden, we hear what sounds like gunshots, but it was fireworks go oh off my God. inside the restaurant because they were celebrating. It was like midnight. So they were going to... I And then I go like this, but I couldn't take my thing into the event. It was, with, it was at the Bayou Music Center, so I had to leave it at the hotel. So I go like this, and I was like, I don't have anything. I look over, and it's just a bunch of black cats and fireworks going off on that corner of the restaurant. I was freaking out. I was like, oh, my God. And then you wake up the next morning, and there was that fucking massacre at the Lunar new year's event and i was like that could have very easily had been what gone on at bro Mars. i was reading the comments on those videos <sighs> some of them were funny i'm not gonna lie <laughs> <laughs> it was like asian on asian crime <laughs> that was those were funny but I and mean, then it also said some of them were like see not only it's not only black people that do that do shoot at, or white people that shoot or something like that yeah. it was like crazy funny shit like that they were posting but at the same time what is happening? Because I didn't know about it except for my sister goes, oh my God, there was a shooting that just happened. I was like, what? I'm like, why are you always, I said, why are you always delivering bad news, girl? God. And I'm like, she's like, what? It's on Instagram. And I was like, dang. I was like, what happened now? I was like, oh, and then a lot of the comments were also, they're like, oh, in one of the most strict gun states yeah. this still happened yeah. so there you go it was well a bunch of the i mean trolls or, or fake accounts bots were all yeah. like oh white supremacy white supremacy and then he, later it was a day later because they didn't say right away who it was they didn't know the manhunt they were blaming maga yeah 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 the same with and i guess maybe we'll just tease this story did you hear about the six-year-old that shot his teacher bro that story was fucking wild because that was another one that was okay. like we're going to talk about that on the next episode okay, because I feel a whole kind of way let, about let's, that. Let's wrap it here. Yeah. So anyway, guys, come on over. Become a Patreon. Uh, it's uh, www.patreon forward slash Her Lounge Podcast. Come be a part of her world. Come join us. We're a great group of women and men um, <laughs> just, you know, trying to make the world better. And shout out to Christy um, because... She got baptized this weekend with her husband. So oh. congratulations to them. It was a very amazing thing to witness it at church. Jess Tear came out. I got to meet her in oh, person cool. as well. Yeah. So that was really nice. And these are all people who we know each other via um, Instagram slash her world because we talk every guys. We talk to each other every day on the discord. Um, but we had never. Well, I've met Christy before because. Um, we've done stuff for each other. Oh, we go to church together. So mm-hmm. that's a different story. Um, and uh, it was really an amazing thing to see and witness and be there. Um, and, you know, everybody, I hate to say this, but we are all really good friends. <laughs> we do. We tell each other our business. I mean, come on. People come on there and be like, hey, y'all, so what What do y'all think? Like, I have this situation. Well, how should I handle it? Yeah. You know? So That's nice. That's nice to have. It's really nice to have, Rob. I'm Sorry it doesn't serious. happen in RPT. Well, it's not the All same. All y'all do over there is talk shit to each other. I could not be a part of that discord. I could not. It's just more anxiety. I would, exactly, exactly. <laughs> if that started happening on my discord, they would, the person initiating that type of, Behavior, atmosphere yeah. would like totally get kicked out. Might as well become a, an immediate communist dictator, like booted, booted. Yes, you are officially blocked. You cannot banned. join. Here's your money back. I don't care. Go back. I don't want none of that here. So, um, congratulations to Christy and her husband. Um, it was a it was an honor to be able to to witness her um, be baptized. So, anyway, guys, uh, thank you so much for listening. We'll see y'all next week. Friday. Bye. We'll see you Friday. Well, Friday only for my patrons. Oh, true, true, true. So You're right. next week. Okay. <laughs>